Now, Martin Scorsese and Leonardo DiCaprio have had a br pretty great track record together. I mean, I've seen most of the films where they work together, so of course I was excited for The Wolf of Wall Street. The trailers look great, and I have to say that while the first 20 to 30 minutes of the film left me a little lukewarm in the sense that it was far from what I was expecting, and, you know, I try not to throw in my expectations when it goes into watching a movie, of course, but the film felt a little odd to me, like something was off. But then I realized that that was merely the setup for what the film was actually about. Then you get introduced to Jonah Hill's character of Donnie. And then as the film progresses, I really understood what The Wolf of Wall Street really was. It's not a film that has a plot per se. A film doesn't need to have a fixed plot as such. The thing is, it is a three hour long character arc. The, ca the journey of a character, pretty much. His rise in the financial uh, era of a business and his rise in Wall Street and how he becomes more and more successful and more rich and how the drugs and the hookers increase and increase and increase. But with all this more and all this excess, he becomes lesser and lesser and lesser of a person. And I think that watching that for three hours and really seeing the disintegration of a man as he rises to power is an extremely important theme that I've seen, you know, it goes back all the way to Shakespeare in times like Macbeth and whatnot. And I thought that witnessing this, especially with the way the film was constructed, was extremely great to watch. Now, the film is a dark comedy, but I think the foundation of the film itself is based on oxymorons, like I said, rise to fame, disintegration of a character, these characters that you just dislike. You know, you would never like them as people, but witnessing the excess life they live and as they go along it's something that you actually don't mind watching and you're on the journey with them having this great amount of fun which ultimately you question yourself as to why you're enjoying watching this but it's presented in the most beautiful way that I think only Martin Scorsese could have really pulled off. I mean, Martin Scorsese really used one aspect of the film that I really loved, where the aspect ratio is your old force to three kind of television, where there's like an advertisement of something going on, immediately after which the scene changes, and it's a completely different film. And I, and I think that the way he used that, you know, he didn't overuse it. There are probably two or three instances throughout the film. But I think that the way he used that, the way he used it to kind of push the story forward, to kind of show you the outer perspective before giving you the deeper, darker, more sick inner perspective. And it kind of has a lot to say about the way people, those who work on Wall Street, the way they live, how people are represented on Wall Street, the exaggeration at times. And while the film might have a tad bit of exaggeration, I think that the exaggeration perfectly works. Let me give an example. There's a scene in the film where Leonardo DiCaprio consumes 15-year-old quaaludes and it was perhaps the most brilliantly made scenes I've ever seen, all right? Leonardo DiCaprio has to crawl down a set of stairs to get into his car to drive home and he ultimately has to perform a Heimlich maneuver on Jonah Hill who's also on quaaludes and this scene sounds bizarre, it is bizarre. And the ridiculousness of the film really reaches its peak in that scene, in my opinion. But I think, while there are two sides to this coin, that there will be some people who will think that, oh, this is, this is complete shit. This is not something that I'm enjoying. Why would I like this? The flip side to that, the side I'm on, is where you embrace the ridiculousness of the story. Where you embrace it. You witness it. You feel it. And I think that that is where the essence of The Wolf of Wall Street really lies. And this is, of course, convincing due to what is perhaps Leonardo DiCaprio's greatest performance, and I'm not even exaggerating on that. The thing is, he has a lot of great moments, you know, in personal interactions, but I think that his performance really strives when he's giving these speeches to those in his workplace, and even Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill is an impressive actor. He's an underrated actor, in my opinion. I think a lot of people take him for granted as a comedic actor. You know, he's haha, he's funny, but... I saw him in Moneyball and I liked him there, but this performance of his was something else. I mean, forget the accent. I mean, that's the smallest of his contributions to this performance. There's so much that he does throughout this film that really made me love him. And the thing is, in his three-hour runtime, while it takes 20 to 30 minutes to ease you into what's going on, I think that the film ultimately leaves you high in a way. Like, you have been so desensitized after a point from what you've seen. Like, you feel on a higher level of energy 
you know, resonating within you. And that, that, that's what happened to me. I don't consume drugs or anything, but the thing is, the Wolf of Wall Street made me feel so high and so filled with energy. And it's a popping, nonstop, energy-giving film that really, really makes you just want to run. It, it, it's, it's so bizarre to explain how the film does that to you, but it, it really has a lot of these moments here and there which inspire you in a certain way, which shock you in a certain way, but ultimately, the ultimate package of The Wolf of Wall Street is a film that I can consider one of my favorites of last year and a film that I will certainly give my highest rating of a triple yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.